Hello and welcome. It is a sunny day in New York, which is misleading because it's also bitterly cold outside. But anyway, uh, let's talk today, uh, Excel World Cup Bootcamp Day 8, about 2D lookups. Start with a simple case. Uh, so we've got just some basic data here. We've got a list of teams down the side, a list of months across the top, and sales data, thousands of dollars for each one. So simple example, what were the sales of Team Beta in October in thousands of dollars? Uh, and you can just do that as an index with two matches or two X matches. So you match the team name against the list of team names. That gives you a row number, which in this case is two. Uh, and you match the month against the list of months. That gives you a column number, which in this case is 10. And then you say, index, give me the third row, uh, sorry, second row and 10th column of this data 2D. I've just given them names uh, for ease of reference. So this is data 2D, this is team 2D, and this is month 2D. So that's pretty simple. Um, <clears throat> worth mentioning uh, that Giles talked about this as well. Actually, you, you can do a 2D lookup with XLOOKUP. Uh, as much as I'm fond of XLOOKUP, I prefer to do it with index X match because uh, if there are multiple matches, uh, you can use exactly the same formula and just expand. So here uh, we're matching a list of teams against the list of teams and note that the order doesn't have to match. So team alpha comes before team gamma and the source data. Uh, matching a list of teams against the team list, and that gives us a list of uh, three, then one, a list of row numbers, and we're matching these months against it to give a list of column numbers, four, five, six, and it unravels like that. Um, I usually save the cases for the end, but let me just quickly show you. This one comes in very handy in uh, one of the cases that we have for free at the moment, uh, Fantasy Excel by Peter Scharl. Uh, one of the levels asks you to figure out the, the number of fantasy points a team scored across a string of weeks. So a team, uh, there's some other fun lookup stuff to do with the teams, but a team is a list of eight players, uh, and the list of weeks is just a list of weeks. And so you can quite naturally kind of index on this list of, uh, you know, weeks along the top and players down the side, this list of everybody's performance every week, something like this. So we'll say index on here, lock, X match, uh, what are we, L98 hash, or, sorry, no, not L98, uh, M97 hash, for the list of players, we're going to match that against this list down here, uh, you could probably use named ranges, but never mind, uh, and then the weeks are already numbers, so we can just say L98 hash, and that'll give us the whole range of things there. There's other stuff in the case about how you convert these into values, but uh, being able to do uh, 2D lookups with multiple matches is sort of key to that one. So anyway, back to the main topic. So that is a sort of straightforward uh, 2D lookup, but now let's talk about a reverse 2D lookup. What team in what month generated $20,000 in sales? Now I've deliberately picked one where there's only one match. So it's Team Beta and it's October. How would we get that? Well, one way is to use uh, concat, not perhaps the uh, top of your list of lookup functions, but you know maybe it should be a little higher. Uh, so what are we saying here? We're saying if uh, the data is equal to 20, then give me the team label. Uh, and so let's just take all of that and put it over here. And this cell reference is broken now, so let's just make that 20. And that you can see, we're saying if it matches, give me the team name, otherwise give me blank. So you get blanks everywhere except in one place. Uh, and so you bring that back over, concatenate them all together, all the blanks disappear, and you can do the same thing for the month. Pretty cool. Uh, and just to mention that if it was numerical data, you could use sum instead of concat, or you could use concat to get the number as text and then coerce it into a number by multiplying by one. We talked about that a couple of days ago. If you have to do a lot of lookups, then flattening the table might work better. So here we have I'll talk about how in a minute, but here we have a flattened version of the data. So there's uh, all the, the team labels. So here's you know 12 rows of team alpha from January to December and their sales, then 12 rows of team beta and so on down all the way through. Uh, so then we can just say, okay, for each of these sales numbers, we can look that up to get the team, look it up to get the month, uh, and we're all good. Um, so let's talk about how we flatten. So there's two things we need here. One is the simple part, which is two call. Two call takes a two-dimensional array and flattens it into a single column. Uh, two row does the same thing for a row. So here we go. There's our 2D array. Uh, it's whatever, four by 12. We flatten it into a list, uh, into a column of 48 entries. But if I then say, okay, let's two call month 2D, that obligingly gives me 
12 months, but not a month. So we're going to need something else to uh, to enable us to handle this. And that thing, that something else, is called broadcast. So you, you might already understand this concept if you use dynamic arrays. The idea is that if you do an operation on two arrays, Excel will expand them uh, to, to sort of match sizes. So here's a simple example. If we have an array that's just one, two, and an array that's one, two, three, and we say add the two arrays together, one is a row, the other is a column. So basically what it does is it, is it expands the row out to two, two dimensions and expands the column out to two dimensions uh, and then adds them together. Um, so a single cell can grow to a row or a column or a 2D array and a row or a column can grow to a 2D array. Uh, other cases like adding rows of different sizes will cause errors. So in other words, if I say, for example, sequence comma three plus sequence comma two, that gives me, so I'm basically adding one, two, three plus one, two. And so where they match, it'll add, but then here there's an NA because one of them doesn't exist in that place. So you just have to be a little careful with that. Uh, okay, so uh, we can use broadcasting to create a flattened list of labels. Just use any operation to expand the labels to the size of the main data, then use to call. It seems complicated, but it's very easy. So here's what, here's what I've done here. Uh, I said, if data 2D is not equal to blank, then give me team 2D, and then to call that. So I'll just take this put it over here so you can see what's happening. All that's doing is just expanding this out to be 12 columns wide and this by the same token expanding the months out to be four rows deep uh, and then you can two column and then work very nicely with a flattened table next thing for multiple matches you can use filter with it with the flattened table so find all teams and months with sales of 21k uh, you can just filter uh, i mean you can also just do it here if you want to validate them but uh, if you want to make it dynamic and work for other inputs and so on uh, there you go. That's your teams and months with sales of 21,000. Uh, all right, what else we got? Oh yeah, you can also get creative with the options in two call. So um, here's a little, this one can be a challenge for the nerds if you like. Uh, list all the months where any team sales were at least $39,000. The few things to mention here. Uh, one, if you look for sales above $39,000, uh, you'll see that in February there are two. So you want to dejupe. The second thing is the regular reading order in two call is left to right. And so you'll hit September, this one, before you hit February, this one. So you want to think about that as well. Um, so yeah, I, I won't I won't explain this formula now because this one is, there's a lot going on here. It's a little advanced for uh, for the course, but if you feel like a challenge, give that a go before you look at my solution, uh, see what you can come up with. Um, so yeah, I guess the only thing left to mention is just I was going to show you a couple of examples. I showed you this one uh, of Peter's where this is this stuff is quite relevant. Just another one here. Uh, this is from the uh, the uh, battle that was on ESPN uh, in the summer. Um, and so the, the case was all about kind of racing around a racetrack. There were questions about the crowd and the ticket sales, questions about cars going around. Most of the game was about these cars rolling dice to see where they'd go. And you could see the numbered squares around the board. Uh, and so one of the early levels asked, uh, you know, what is the address of this cell number? So for example, this, this 20, you can go and look and find it here. And that's okay, E17, uh, you can plug that in, but you gotta figure that out more systematically. So you could do something like, um, concat if, uh, and obviously it would be good to give these named ranges if you were gonna do more of these, but whatever. Uh, so if that is equal to your input, which is whatever, G70, uh, and you can do the, the combination directly in here. So you can say that and this, that will generate an array of the addresses, otherwise blank. Close the concat, close the if, and if I've locked them all, that'll work nicely. Uh, and then that carried on to the next level where you rolled a bunch of, bunch of dice to figure out what number you were on and then converted that to an address as well. Um, and I think that's all I've got for today. So uh, I'll be back tomorrow with some more, uh, I can't remember what I'll be back tomorrow with, but it'll be something cool, I'm sure. Thanks for watching. See you next time.